check, one, two, check. Well, if it's a quick meeting, uh, that's all I'll need. <laughs> yeah, thank you. If you need more, just look down and I'll just grab it and pass it down. I drink a lot of water. But to answer your question, I would I would rather have some water with my, with a meal than anything else. Look, just don't have any We have the twins. I used to. We'll now call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to uh, recognize everyone that's here tonight. Uh, thank you for attending the meeting and all the, also those that are watching the meeting or will be watching the meeting on G10 television. Uh, we're going to begin tonight uh, with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I'm going to ask the members of the Rolling Thunder Chapter 5 if you would uh, lead us in the pledge tonight, and we'll follow that with the invocation by uh, 
Our city attorney, please rise. Y'all can come on up front. Give you a minute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as always, we pause at this time to give you thanks. To give you thanks for all the blessings you bestow upon us individually and the blessings you bestow upon our city the city of Jacksonville. Tonight, however, we want to give a special thanks. A special thanks for you sparing our community some of the flooding and devastation and loss of life that we've seen in neighboring communities and counties from Hurricane Matthew. And as we raise this prayer of thanksgiving, we pray for those who are having to pick up the pieces to move forward. We pray for those who are having to serve there and their county commissioners and their cities to help those folks see a brighter tomorrow. May your presence be with each one of those so dramatically affected by this hurricane. Tonight also we pause to give thanks for the life, the life of Louis Sewell, for his service to this city, to the state on the DOT, and for all he meant to many of us here. He was truly a public service servant, and we give thanks and pray for his family in this hour of their mourning. As always, we pray for our military who are serving us here and around the world, for their safety and for their anxious families, and always give your guidance and your direction to our council in all of their deliberations. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Uh, Council, uh, you have before you a copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, and I would entertain a motion uh, to adopt the agenda, uh, and I would like for you to add a consent item, uh, this being an NCDOT mowing contract, to the uh, consent agenda. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, we have a few presentations to make tonight. I'd like to uh, recognize uh, or call up David Lynch, president of the Rolling Thunder. Uh, if you could join me up front here. And I know you have a lot of your folks here with you tonight. Uh, uh, did you want them to come up? Or? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's do that. They're, they're all dressed out. I hate for them to get all dressed up and not do anything. <laughs> and no place to go. That's right, Gene. For the sixth year in a row, the Department of Veterans Affairs has designated the city of Jacksonville as an official re regional site for Veterans Day observances. Jacksonville is one of approximately 57 communities out of 33 states to have received this honor and is, only, is one of the only four designated, designated sites in North Carolina. Our Rolling Thunder chapter here organizes the city's annual Veterans Day parade, which will be held Saturday. November 5th at 10 a.m. I'm looking forward to it, and I hope you are too. Please come out and on, on Western Boulevard and uh, watch the parade. You'll be amazed. Sir, here's the, the certificate, sir, from the Veterans Day National Committee, hereby designating the city of Jacksonville as a regional site for observance of Veterans Day 2016. Yes, sir. So how many, how many float, tell me about your, how many floats you're going to have. We've got uh, 12 or 13 floats and about over 800 people participating in the, in the parade so far. Very good. So again, uh, let's, let's get that date right. 
It's the uh, 5th, of 5th of November at 10 o'clock a.m. Uh, 10 o'clock a.m. on down Western Boulevard. Down Western Boulevard. Okay. Come out and see us. Come out and see them. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you all for Thank coming you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> Oh, war. Okay. You. I need you up here. <laughs> Council, if y'all want to join us out front here, I'm going to read some. I'm going to read some uh, stuff here. Hopefully, it's all true. <laughs> It is with a great deal of pleasure that I'm able to recognize Councilman Jerry Bittner tonight for his longevity of service to this city. Uh, Councilman Bittner began his service with the city in September of 1987, serving as the city manager until his retirement in April of 1999. Uh, during his uh, nearly 12 years as a city manager, he worked diligently with the mayor and council to accomplish many important and innovative projects here in Jacksonville and for the citizens' benefit, including the annexation of Camp Lejeune Marine Corps Base, the purchase of land, and then future development of the Jacksonville Commons Recreation Complex, and the land treatment system project, a cutting-edge edge technology that enabled the city to move forward with the cleanup of efforts of Wilson Bay and the New River. Not long after his retirement in September of 2001, the City Council appointed him to a vacant council member seat. He was subsequently elected for another term serving as a council member, cumulatively to date for nearly 14 years, with five of those years serving as Mayor Pro Tem. There have been many accomplishments in the city during his elected service, including the redevelopment of the city hall that we're in tonight, construction of the Richard Ray All-America Park, the public works and utilities facility, the Freedom Fountain, Jacksonville Landing, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, the Montfort Point Marine Memorial, phase one of the Museum of the Marine, <coughs> Fire Station Number 2, and the Center for Public Safety, just to name a few. During his 25 years of total service to the city, he has served as a member of the Energy, Environment, and Natural Resources Policy Committee and the Regulatory Advisory Committee of the North Carolina League of Municipalities. He has served as a member of the Onslow Civic Affairs Committee for seven years, and he has represented the city on the Onslow Water and Sewer Authority for 13 of the 16 years that Onwasa has been in existence. He has served as council liaison to the Fire Advisory Board, Fire Safety Advisory Board, and he continues to serve as a council liaison to the uh, Board of Adjustment. Jerry Bittner has continually dedicated his time and talents to making Jacksonville the best it can be for our citizens, and I am so proud to present him with his 27 year or 25 year longevity recognition. I had to take my pulse, I thought I was rehearing my eulogy for a minute. <laughs> I want you all to know that all these accomplishments which you're giving me credit for, not really so. I built a lot of my efforts on the brains and energy of a lot of city employees and members of the city council and past mayors. And for them, I owe to them my longevity, particularly the city employees and to the people of Jacksonville who have, I hope, uh, understood that I always tried to serve them to the best of my ability. So I thank you for this recognition.
Well, I have to say he's the best city manager I ever served under, but you're the best city manager that has served under us. <laughs> Today. You did notice that Mr. Bittner and I are dressed very similar. It's just he has the flamboyant shirt. <laughs> he is. He's very, very small. Okay. A great deal of pleasure here. And this one, too, also. Now, I will save that paper in case I need it on down the road. <laughs> Years from now. Years from now. Um, I'd like to ask... Chief Mike Unero, our Director of Public Safety, uh, to come forward. I, is George Barrows here tonight? I did not see him. He's still, uh, is he still recovering? He's recovering? Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, well, Chief, let's see here. Let's hold on just a minute here. Ready? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, it's not bad. It's, it's, nothing, it's nothing bad. Don't worry about it. Um, this evening we have a very special presentation. that wasn't on the agenda. It was kind of hidden from you, and you were, got, you were brought here under a ruse. I'll have to say that. Uh, but I want, to tell, I want to tell you a little bit about this guy here, our, our Director of Public Safety, Mike Yanero. Uh We'll get, do a little bit of the bio here. Mike is a graduate of East Tennessee State University with a BS degree in criminal justice and a master's degree in police studies. He is also a graduate of the FBI National Academy and the Harvard and Police Executive and the Harvard and Police Executive Research Forum's Senior Management Institute for Police. He is certified by the American College of Forensic Examiners as a law enforcement expert. He was the first law enforcement officer in the country and the first person in East Tennessee to receive the FBI Director's Community Leadership Award. Mike also received the Bristol Rotary Club's Four-Way Test Award, Officer of the Month by the National Law, Enforcement, law Enforcement's Memorial Fund, and he is a recipient of the Golden Eagle Man of the Year Award from the Greater Jacksonville Onso Chamber of Commerce. In October of 2004, Mike was appointed as the police, a chief of police for the city of Jacksonville, and in July 2012 was named the director of public safety when the city of Jacksonville police and fire departments merged into the Department of Public Safety. Since becoming the director, Mike has been instrumental and implementing numerous programs such as the Ch Children's Advocacy Center, the Gang Resistance Education and Training Program, or GREAT as it's referred to, Community Officer and Community Response Teams, the Holiday Task Force, Public Safety Officers, uh, public safety officers who are trained civilian staff to handle administrative matters to free officers for patrol duties, instituted the Citizens Police Academy, the Center of Public Safety Motorcycle, or yes, the Center of Sub Public Safe for Public Safety Motorcycle Unit, neighborhood watch programs, school resource officers, and National Night Out. He has also worked closely with local law enforcement agencies such as state and federal task forces to address criminal drug activities for stricter sentences for these crimes the U.S. Secret Service to aid in, in investigations involving computers, phones, and other devices, Naval Criminal Investigative Services with partnerships for Carolina Field Offices for seamless law enforcement services on board base and off, and the Jacksonville Oslo Chamber of Commerce to provide law enforcement outreach to the, businesses, to the business community on emerging topics, as well as the faith community to provide support and outreach to strengthen that partnership. In addition, Mike has worked to obtain grants in order to fund staffing and equipment for initiatives such as Project Safe Neighborhood, which reduces gun violence and gangs, 
weed and seed, which prevents and reduces violent crime, and traffic enforcement to reduce crashes and fatalities in the city. <clears throat> That's a lot of stuff you've done in those 12 years. The Order of the Longleaf Pine is awarded to persons for exemplary service to the state of North Carolina and their communities that is above and beyond the call of duty and which has made a significant impact and strengthened North Carolina. Mike Unero is a prime example of someone who deserves this award. And on behalf of the governor of the state of North Carolina, it is my pleasure to present to you this award for the Order of the Longleaf Pine. He's done an incredible job, and uh, we've been very blessed to have him in our community, and hopefully we're going to keep him for some time to come. So now I'm going to give the mic to him. Would you like to say a few things? Thank you, Mayor. I, I'm, I'm humbled by this. Uh, I, I didn't expect it, uh, but, um, and you know, it's really not about me. It's about, it's about the staff, and it's about the, you and, and the council. You know, I, I talk to my counterparts every day uh, across this state, and, and you know, I hear about the things that go on in their communities, and I, and I feel how blessed I am to be here, to be here with a, a council that's so supportive, a city management team that's so supportive, and a staff that's so supportive. You know, um, you know they work tirelessly every single day to make our community better. And, you know, they deserve that because, you know, they're the ones out pounding the pavement and answering the 911 calls and rushing into those fires. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's just an honor to, to be part of that organization. And, and I thank you for, for the support that you've given in, in a lot of the good things that we've done over the last year. <clears throat> I do want to say a couple more things uh, on behalf of the governor. Um, I know that uh, Co Governor McCrory, uh, when this was presented to him, uh, Governor McCrory, you know, doesn't like to give these things out very often. He wants it to be exemplary service. And, you know, during these times in which law enforcement has really been getting a bad rap because of a few mistakes made by a few officers, you know, Governor McCrory saw Mike Unero, our police chief, our director of public safety, as being exemplary of what a community police officer should be. And on behalf of the governor, I wanted to pass that information on to you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Or this, this recognition by the governor gives you the honor to be able to give. It says, uh, with the rank of ambassador extraordinary, privileged to enjoy fully all rights 
granted to members of this exalted order, among which is the special privilege to, per, to uh, per, I can't even see it. What's that say? <laughs> you got your glasses on, I don't. Okay, to propose the following uh, toast, North Carolina toast, to, in select company anywhere in the free world. Here's to the land of the longleaf pine, the summer land where the sun doth shine, where the wheat grows strong and the strong grow wheat. Good, great. Excuse me, where the strong, strong grow, great, grow great. Here's to down home, the old North State. That's a nice little toast. Anyway, thank you again. Good. Congratulations, Mike. Well deserved. Might, also, might that commit you to at least another five years, mm -hmm. ten years before you can retire. Okay. <laughs> he agreed. I heard him. Yep, I heard it too. That's that's wonderful. And I want to thank George Barrows. George is the one that initiated this. He wasn't able to be here tonight because George has been under the weather here lately. And uh, hope I hope him a speedy recovery because he is certainly a very community oriented. Uh, gentleman who has the best of the you know the best interest of the city in mind also thank you george <clears throat> all right so we have public let's see you're right yeah public comment i have no one signed up is anybody had gotten the urge to speak fernando Yes, if you'll tell, well, she knows who you are. <laughs> yeah, my name is Fernando Schuffelbein. I'd just like to uh, remind everyone of the Beirut Memorial that's coming up on Sunday. Uh, this year, it's going to be held at 1400, 2 p.m. at the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. Uh, I also want to mention what a great team effort it was to get that place the way it is now. I've never seen so many city people, uh, crews and base crews, and, and all the volunteers that took time to get out there and make that place, the whole gardens look as fabulous as it does. So I'd like to thank everyone for doing that. And please come out and, and uh, witness the, the event. It's a very historical event that's every year. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, okay, so we're gonna move along here. Uh, find my place here. Don't we're going to look at adopting the uh, minutes and consent items here. We have a September 20th, 2016 regular meeting, and we have five consent items on here. Can I uh, get a motion on that? Second. Any discussion? Here, none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. I know that a lot of you came here for the presentations tonight, and we're going to get into the... Uh, in meat of the meeting here. I'm going to take a, a quick uh, break here so that you can hightail it out of here if you want to. But by all means, you're welcome to stay. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you. Look at agenda item number five, and this is a city of Jacksonville. It's a gateway, gateway marketplace LLC development agreement. And uh, 
This is going to be presented by Dr. Woodruff. Mayor, members of city council, several months ago, the city was contacted by a potential developer who is looking at property immediately adjacent to property which the city owns on Western Boulevard. The graphic which is in front of you shows Western Boulevard, and as you can see in the road that's generally at the bottom, that is Gateway North. The property between Gateway North and the area that is in green that's identified as Gateway Marketplace, LLC, is city property. Over the last several months, the potential developer of Gateway Marketplace has conducted a series of market studies as well as conducted the required traffic impact analysis. That traffic impact analysis shows a significant number of roadway improvements which will be required. One of those improvements, though, addresses the need to have an additional access point from the proposed development down through the city property down to Gateway North. That is the area shown in blue. That is a proposed road. In order for this to happen, we have a development agreement requirement. And what that development agreement does is it stipulates all of the responsibilities of the various parties. I'll go back to the graphic. You will notice in your agenda packet that there is a development agreement that's proposed. In general, what that says is the specific responsibilities of the developer and the responsibilities of the city. From the city standpoint, our only responsibility is to provide the land. It is the developer's responsibility to totally develop a two-lane road within a 60-foot area. It's not an easement. We're just calling it an area. They also considerations must be given to stormwater management and other improvements. The road must be built to the standards of the MSSD of the city. Overall, the benefit that the city will receive are twofold. Number one, it will create two parcels of city property that are now serviced by a public road. Number two, the construction of that road system will enable us to potentially sell city property at a higher price because what you're now creating is an internal circulation system. And of course, from a public standpoint, one of the real benefits is the fact that persons can now go from the commons into the marketplace development when it occurs without having to get out on Western Boulevard. The development agreement stipulates the specific approvals, I'm sorry, the specific responsibilities. It also stipulates a timeline. You're required, as the developer, they are required to construct all of these facilities, including a stormwater pond to serve this road within a three-year period. Under certain conditions, that can be extended by one year. That three-year period literally begins this evening if you approve it. So from a financial standpoint, the gain to the city is, number one, a public improvement that someone else is paying for at no expense to the city other than providing the land. Second benefit to the public is we're now creating two frontage lots of acreage so that in the future we can sell that property for retail or some private development. Number three, it enables the private developer who is on the area to the north, Gateway Marketplace, to proceed with a development that's going to create substantial tax base for our community. City Attorney has worked with me and with their attorney, the attorney for Gateway Marketplace LLC, and we're uh, here this evening to answer any other questions. We would recommend adoption of the development agreement. Mr. Attorney, do you have other comments? Council, any questions of Dr. Woodruff? Is the road in blue, that's going to go further than the blue, right? Just trying to yes, sir. If you, uh, if you were to have on this graphic their development plan, you would see that it ties into the internal circulation system for the large-scale development that will occur on their potential property. And again, they have the property under contract. They have not purchased the property, 
They have options to purchase. Their attorney is here who can further explain that if needed. But yes, Mr. Thomas, it will connect to an internal circulation system that will eventually get all the way up to Go Henderson right. Extension Extension. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Dr. Winter. Thank you. We're uh, going to conduct the public hearing, a required public hearing in this matter. So at this time, I'll recess the regular council meeting and open up the public hearing. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this matter? Please state your name and address to, for the clerk. My name is Tom Johnson. I'm the attorney for the developer, um, Gateway Marketplace. I'm, my address is 4141 Park Lake Avenue, Suite 200 in Raleigh. I just want to thank the city manager and city attorney for working so well with us to get this done. They were true professionals and, and helped immensely in reaching this point. And Mr. Woodruff was on, on point in terms of what this accomplishes. And uh, I'm just available to answer any questions that mayor or council may have. Council, any questions? Thank you. Anyone else present wishes to speak to this matter? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. Council, you're being asked to consider the development agreement, thereby documenting the responsibilities of the developer in the city relative to these improvements. Mayor Phillips, I'll make the motion to approve the attached development agreement as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Warden? I travel that road uh, out of Gateway North several times a day and, and uh, short term I think we're going to be as that develops I think there's potential to, to negatively impact the traffic however um, that's one of the, the happy byproducts I think of growth and development uh, but it it is it is something that we've talked about in the, uh, the transportation plant, met, metropolitan tran, uh, planning organization the local transportation board if you will and we know what's going to happen. We we need it to to we need to actually show some increased traffic in that area in order to help improve some traffic. And I know the plans are to extend Henderson Drive out a little further out to hopefully uh, uh, Ramsey Road at some point in the future. So so uh, you know it's bittersweet in some ways. And in, in the short term, it's I think it's going to hurt a little bit traffic wise, but long term benefit. Anyone? Any other discussion? All right. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Brings us to agenda item number six. Uh, this is a public hearing on a map amendment uh, for rezoning from residential multifamily uh, low density. Uh, Residential multifamily to corridor commercial. This is 523 Freedom Way. Uh, Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item. Jeremy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, uh, item uh, agenda item six is a rezoning request submitted by Miss Annette F. Metz. The property is located at 523 Freedom Way. Um, misplaced vicinity map. Mm -hmm. um, it's near uh, at the corner of Tallman Circle and Freedom Way, uh, Highway 24. Um, a little history on this is uh, Miss Mitz, his son came into the office looking to do something with the property. It has historically been used commercially. It's always been an auto repair. Um, he inquired about doing some retail there. Um, at that time, staff investigated and found out the property was actually zoned residential multifamily low density. And this was a product of the 2003 ETJ expansion the city did at that time it was zoned RM5. <clears throat> so staff reviewed the Camel land use plan and uh, adjacent properties as you'll notice on this map before you with the existing zoning those properties going back towards the city um, corporate you'll notice that they are zoned corridor commercial the Camel land use plan has identified this entire area as mixed use, so therefore it does support a request for rezoning to corridor commercial. If, if approved, this is what the parcel would look like with the adjacent properties shown. Um, at the 
Planning Advisory Board, uh, they reviewed and have recommended approval along with staff, finding, with findings of fact A through J being found in the affirmative, and that the rezoning would advance the public interest by allowing for more orderly and logically development. I'll be happy to answer any questions that the City Council may have. Council, any questions of Mr. Smith? Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. So this time I'm going to recess the regular council meeting and open the required public hearing in this matter. Is there anyone present who wishes to speak to this matter? If so, raise your hand. Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. Council, you're being asked to uh, consider the proposed request here. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the request based on findings of facts A through J and that the rezoning advances the public interest in, in allowing a more logical development. Second. Motion and second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Brings us to agenda item number seven. This is a public hearing for a map amendment for rezoning from residential single family uh, 20 to co corridor commercial, uh, 1610 and 1602 Wilmington Highway, and 111 Kennedy Road. And Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item. Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. This is a similar situation uh, just on the opposite side of town. Uh, this is the vicinity map as shown before, uh, noting the location that the Wilmington Highway, the service road that is on the other side of the wall in the bypass and Kennedy Road. Uh, Mr. Fred Beecham submitted this rezoning request for um, part of a building uh, on a parcel adjacent to A1 storage or A1 cleaners at the corner of Kennedy and um, Wilmington Highway. Um, again, this is a product of the 2003 ETJ expansion. At that time, the property was zoned RS. Um, RA20, um, however, it had historically been used for commercial for several years um, as a warehouse storage um, along with the A1 cleaners at the corner. So looking at Mr. Beecham's request, staff identified the two adjacent parcels and um, wanted to include those uh, to correct a nonconformity. Um, back up to the aerial, you'll note at the corner, A1 cleaners is on two parcels and then the large Larger black building is owned by Mr. Beecham. That is the warehouse um, side. The Camel land use plan again supports this by identifying this entire area as mixed use. So therefore a request to rezone to a corridor commercial is supported. This is what the parcels would look like with the adjacent properties shown if rezoned to CC at their Meeting the Planning Advisory Board along with staff is recommending approval with findings of fact A through J being found in the affirmative. And again, finding that this rezoning advances the public interest by allowing for more orderly and logical development. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Council, any questions of Mr. Smith? Here, thank you. Thank you. This time we'll recess the regular council meeting, open the required public hearing in this matter. Is anyone present wishes to speak to this agenda item? Seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. Council, you're being asked to consider the proposed rezoning. Mayor Phillips, I move that uh, we approve the rezoning with findings of fact A through J being found in the affirmative that the rezoning also advances the public interest. <clears throat> I have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, agenda item number eight. <clears throat> this is a public hearing uh, regarding the uniform uh, Unified Development Ordinance Text Amendment, Article 5, Development Standards, <coughs> Section 5.12, Signage uh, Billboards. Section 7.6, non-conforming signs and billboards, and Article 9.3, definitions. And Ryan King will be presenting this item. Ryan. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. As you may recall, back in, I believe it was March of this year, uh, city staff brought forth a UDO text amendment based on recent court case to prohibit specifically 
um, and very clearly in our ordinance um, prohibit LED or changeable message boards on billboards. As a result of that meeting, city staff has, um, over the last several months since April, we have sat down on numerous occasions with both Fairway and Lamar um, Advertising, who own the majority of the billboards within the city of Jacksonville. And um, just to kind of orient everybody, uh, the green area is the city's ETJ, the blue area is the city limits on the screen before you. The um, triangles represent the 89 billboards, which equates to 166 faces. And the area in red is the billboard overlay zone. So uh, the red area is the only location where the billboards can be placed. We do have some outside of those areas due to um, being there before the billboard overlay zone was adopted. So in some cases, in many cases, they're non-conforming. Um, as a result of the discussions that we've had over the last several months, uh, both Fairway and Lamar Advertising has submitted a zoning text amendment that we have before you this evening. And I'll go over some of the highlights of those changes. Um, as I stated before, we added language prohibiting the LED billboards which would allow us the opportunity to sit down with the representatives, which we have done, which leads us to tonight's meeting. Uh, the applicant's request uh, basically states that they would be allowed to convert up to 10% of their inventory billboard faces. And as you recall on a previous slide, I, I put how many billboard faces there were, because in some cases you have a one-sided billboard versus a two-sided. So there's 166 faces total in the city's jurisdiction. So each company would be able to, to upgrade 10% of their billboard faces to LED. There's also a provision that says if I sell some of my inventory to another company, then the number of LED billboards that I can have would also reduce accordingly. And that maintains that 10% maximum cap that is being proposed with this amendment. Uh, the maximum height would remain at 40. That's a current standard. However, if they have an existing 60-foot tall billboard and they want to change out that billboard face to an LED, they would be required to reduce the height down to 40 feet under the provisions of this ordinance. Uh, the maximum size is currently set at 400 square feet. As with the height, if they want to convert a 678 square foot or 600 square foot billboard to LED, they would have to reduce it down to no more than 400 square feet. So as you can see, if they convert these, we'll get a little bit shorter billboards and we'll get a little bit smaller billboards if they are converting a larger or taller billboard. The billboards will also have technology designed to basically freeze the message if there's a technical glitch or basically discontinue. That way, if there's a glitch in the system, it won't be doing something crazy. It basically, it'll go black or it'll go to a static to where the message will not change. The proposed duration that is identified within this ordinance is 15 seconds. So every 15 seconds, it will be able to um, change to a new message. However, there's a provision that we are adding uh, similar to the Wilmington model that states if the billboard industry, the owner of that billboard, uh, agrees to display public emergency messages on the billboard, they can reduce uh, or increase the frequency in which it can change to every eight seconds. And that's something that they use for amber alerts. Um, I think some of them were used with the most recent um, hurricane and flooding event where they can post, you know, use alternate routes or things like that. Basically, what's defined in the text under the, I believe it's called out in, in, in the exhibit here as a public emergency message. Uh, lighting standards to make sure that they're not too bright. This is kind of an industry standard as it relates to the billboards. If the existing billboard is proposed to be changed out to LED, there's a substantial amount of new weight that would go on that structure. So they would have to have that structure analyzed by a design professional to ensure that the additional weight could um, be added to that billboard. If it could not be, then in line with the state general statutes for modernization, they would be able to drop that pole and replace it with a new sturdy pole that would accommodate the additional weight. In conjunction with this, there is some general statutes that deals with um, basically the ability to cut within the, the DOT right-of-way, and we just made reference to that, and then 
we added the definition, as I stated a second ago, what the public emergency message would be defined as. That being said, we have representatives from both Lamar and Fairway who are the applicants for this agenda item that um, I'm not sure exactly, I guess, Conrad Pyre, would you be representing Fairway this evening? Sure. And then um, Doug? No. Doug Noble with Lamar is here as well. We did invite um, one of the other billboard industry folks. They had, I think, two signs or two billboards. Uh, these two uh, folks have the lion's share of, of the number of billboards in Jacksonville. So of those 89 billboards, I think between Fairway and Lamar, they have about 80 of them. That's all that I have at this time. Be happy to answer any questions any that questions you may have now. Uh, Mr. King, you, you referenced the Wilmington model. Yes, sir. Do they use a 10 percent? I can't say that they use the 10 percent on that particular one. That was as it relates to the, the public emergency message about being able to have the message change more frequently. Okay. Well, I was asking about the 10 percent rule that I we believe got. it's 40. 40 I believe it's a 40 percent cap. But they, they also have some different standards about gateways moving billboards from location A to B and B to C. Their attorney will address that. Any other questions, of Mr. King? Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. <clears throat> At this time, I will. Uh, recess the regular council meeting and open up public hearing on this since it is a zoning text amendment. Is there anyone present wishes to speak to this matter? My name is Conrad Flyler with uh, Fairway Outdoor Advertising. Um, our team is in full support of this text amendment and I'd like to be able to at least communicate our full and respectful appreciation of this process. I think that um, when we first approached this project, we had a lot of ideas from both sides, and it was definitely uh, a nice exercise for us to be able to find a text amendment that was going to be able to merge those two ideas in a positive way for this community. You, you have the Wilmington ordinance with 40%, but I really feel like for Jacksonville, this is a nice baby step to see how the community will react to this kind of, uh, this kind of usage. So we're very happy with this, and we look forward to seeing what it will bring. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, Doug Noble, Lamar Advertising, and we are in support as well. Um, appreciate all the, the help from the city and in the process. It was... Uh, it was um, it was a good process, and we appreciate all the support. And thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Since I have no other takers, I'm going to close the public hearing in this matter and reconvene the regular council meeting. Councilor, you've been asked to consider this zoning text amendment. May I make a motion that we approve the zoning text amendment? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any d further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> we have uh, another section of public comment. Uh, is anyone come in after the sheet was taken up want to speak at public comment all right we'll move on to the uh, uh, agenda item number nine here this is designation of voting uh, delegates at the national league of uh, cities conference uh, for their annual business meeting so how would uh, you know, we have uh, council member uh, jerome willingham and uh Councilwoman Angela Washington are currently registered to attend the NLC Congress of Cities. So, uh, have y'all decided who you want to be the voting delegate? 
I'll be the voting delegate since I'm on the HD committee. Okay. Is there any other nominations? Okay. Could the nominations be closed, and uh, we accept that by acclamation. Is that is that legal? What I did? Oh, is that legal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any Ms. other discussion? <laughs> Ms. Washington and, and Mr. Willingham will yes. be second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you, Angela. <clears throat> I got two people. It's <laughs> pretty simple. Pretty simple. <laughs> could have made an arm wrestle before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, she's here. He's not. So. Yeah, that's right. You, you win it. Just you win the prize for being here. All right, so we're going to go to the reports next. And I'm going to start down here with... Uh, Council Member Ward. No report, sir. Just proud to be here. I'm proud to have you here. Uh, Councilman Tom. I'll say a couple of things. I just want to kind of reiterate what John mentioned in the invocation. I was, I thought it was kind of interesting how the week of the storm, we started out and it was coming, it was coming. And then about the middle of the week, they said, oh, it's not going to come. It's going to veer out. You know, the experts were telling us this great path. And so then we relaxed for a couple of days, and then you find out what really happened. So I guess you can listen to the experts, but sometimes you got to wait and see what happens. And I uh, also want to express my personal, probably the group's um, condolences to the friends and family of Lewis Sewell. I think a lot of what he did in the public sector is well known. But when I met Lewis, he was a, the principal at Northwoods, middle junior high junior high school and you know even though he was a principal he wielded a lot of influence with the board of education at least i remember when he used it on me so, <laughs> anyway, uh, a great extraordinary individual sorely missed i remember when he visited us here last recognized all of us and had something nice to say about all of us and he'll be missed thank you Mr. Bittner. Just want to reiterate my appreciation for the recognition this evening. Quite a shock. And uh, <clears throat> again, appreciate the opportunity to have worked over those 25 years with so many fine people, including the mayor and councils and the employees. Uh, really appreciate the recognition. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem yeah. Zara. And I, too, uh, Mayor, very quickly, you know, uh, talk about Mr. Sewell, uh, all the years that, and advice that he has given me uh, has been instrumental. But I think it's important to note, having uh, been part of the transportation process, the significant impact he's had in this community uh, for generations yes. of the future. I mean, he, he brought to Jacksonville some wonderful improvements that... Uh, that uh, will serve so many uh, in the future and how difficult it is to get those projects in, in, a in a small community like ours, all these bypasses and roads that he, he was able to bring here and sort of put us on the map is significant. Because if you look at your triad areas, your, your Raleigh's and Greensboro's and Charlotte that soak up, you know, majority of the funding mechanism, you know, we, we were very fortunate to have him on our behalf, and uh, I think it, yes, it needs to be recognized that it, it will have a lasting impact into the future. So he will be missed, and uh, and uh, his his mentorship. So thank you. That's all I have. I'm gonna I'm gonna say also, um, as far as Mr. Lewis Sewell's concerned, he's gonna be missed in this community. I. I I've known known Mr. Sewell for a long time, just like you, Randy. And uh, ever since I got into the uh, political area, he's always uh, been good for a little bit of advice from here, from that, from you know, different things. Uh, uh, and always enjoyed listening to his stories, uh, even about when he was selling News and Observers here in Jacksonville to start off with, uh, you know, making his money for college. Uh, I want to say this about Lewis Sewell. He was a fine gentleman, and uh, he will be missed in this community. And uh, my uh, compassion and sorrow goes out to his family. Uh, and uh, he will, like I said, he will be missed. I do want to remind everybody about the Beirut observance this Sunday at 2 p.m. Uh, at the Beirut Memorial. I think... Uh, 
uh, Major General uh, Miller will be the uh, guest speaker this this year. Also, we have Oktoberfest this weekend. Uh, Oktoberfest is going on in the uh, Riverwalk Park, so uh, anybody that uh, you have some spare time on your hands, go on down there, and uh, I'm sure you'll have a good time. With that, Dr. Woodruff. Mayor, members of council, would like to thank the public for the assistance they gave in the storm recovery. As has been mentioned by several, we were fortunate to wake up on Sunday morning with very little storm damage. But the public was extremely cooperative relative to traffic issues and safety issues, and we appreciate that. I'd also like to publicly commend the city staff. Many of you know the work, well, all of you know the work that the city staff does every day. The public really assumes that things are going to work out. But I can tell you how proud I was to see the city staff work through the storm to make sure that sewer lift stations were kept to a minimum as far as problems, that traffic lights were back and operational as quick as possible. When you look at the investment each of us make in our taxes, and then you look at the return you get every day in the services, I don't believe that there's a community anywhere that is more fortunate. We are, in, we are blessed by the quality, the dedication of the employees you have with the city of Jacksonville. On Mr. Sewell, I'd like to tell you a, a quick story. He called me one day, I hadn't been here very long, and he asked me if I'd come to his house. So I did. And he said, I understand you're raising money for something called the Freedom Fountain. Tell me about it. So I did. He said, I want you to look me in the eye. I said, yes, sir, I will. Is this thing going to get built? I said, yes, sir, you have my pledge. It will be built because the mayor and council have already spoken and said they will build it and then get repaid by the public. He said, in that case, I pledge you $25,000. He will be missed. Mayor Council, thank you all for your service. I don't think I can say any more than it's been said. Thank you, Mayor. No report. <clears throat> it's been happening for a long time. 27 years.